So that's what I like about the sport. The other thing I like is that um, on my Insta page, um, you know, I have people who will follow, who have followed me for years, and then meet me in person, and then find out I'm a little girl. <laughs> like on your Instagram, you look ginormous. You look tall. I'm like the size. No, no, I literally am a little. I'm five one on a good day, and um, I probably am packing on about 125 right now. Well, I'll show you guys the difference. You guys see me all the time. I'm 5'6". <laughs> I'm a little girl. This is Andy in real. <laughs> yes, she makes me feel like I'm six feet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's funny. I have a picture of me on one of the last five percent um, uh, entourage things that we did um, at the LA Fit Expo, and we were there waiting for our Uber. <laughs> and uh, no lie, I had. Uh, um, Martin Ford, I had uh, Apollo, I had uh, Caleb, and... Oh um, no, you were next to Big C too? Oh, oh no, no, I was in the <laughs> middle of all of them. So I have this picture, and I'll send it to you. I have this picture of me and the four guys. All these guys are six, one and above. Oh, Martin Ford is six, nine. And here I am standing in between Martin Ford and Apollo, who is six, I think six, two. And I look like a little kid, so I sent that picture actually to my dad once. I was like, Dad, look, can you find the little girl in the picture? I'm surrounded by these huge guys. It was the best picture. Um, I'll send it to you so you can have it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm a little girl. I'm yes. tiny. Yes. You know, I'm not very big. Um, you don't have to be very big to be in this industry. Um, you just have to have a passion. Um, and uh, that's what most people have here is um, uh, you see, you know, Flex, and you see Jay Cutler, and you see Lou Ferrigno. You know, these guys are have been in the industry for so long, and you know, they bring up even the small kids are like, oh, I want to be like Lou Ferrigno. You know, the Hulk. And um, I just remember, you know, back in the day when I was a little kid, that you know, lifting weights was kind of almost like a chore because I played softball. You know, <laughs> it's funny because. People go, oh, how much cardio do you do? And I was like, you ever see me running? You need to start running with me because somebody's chasing me. Or I've gotten into trouble sometimes. <laughs> so, like, these are these are things that you learn and you and you uh, you grow up watching and one day wanting to be and you know one day I wanted to be Linda Murray or I wanted to be <laughs> Wonder Woman. And now, here I am, you know, a little miniature one. <laughs> now, you were mentioning the cardio and it just got me thinking, <laughs> do you end up incorporating at all during show tips? So, Prep, and if so, how long? The only time you will ever catch me on a cardio machine actually doing cardio is the week of prep. So peak week is the week that we actually do cardio, um, and I will do it four times that week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's it. So you do cardio four times in your whole entire prep? Jesus. Everything is diet. It, this, what's amazing to me is from where you started at 225 and you don't even have to touch cardio. No. No, and it's all in what you eat. So there That's is the a, frequency of the meals. Yeah, the frequency of the meals, the caloric deficit. So right now my caloric intake on a day that I don't work out is 850 calories. On a day that I do work out is 910. Wow. So, and that's just the, the four Dex four tabs that I get. So, um, which is 60 calories. There's my 60 calories from 850 to, to uh, 910. What is your thought on, um, this is gonna end up being an interview now, a workout interview. This is just gonna go this way too. But what's your thoughts on like flexible dieting then? Like, do you, do you feel counting macros is your way to go? Or explain to them, the difference between frequent eating meals and say eating one big meal. Okay, so um, I'm pretty sure any, anybody who has been heavy um, has not been fit all their lives. I've not been fit all my lives. I was fit as a as a teenager. I was fit in my 20s. Had a kid. Went through life the whole nine yards. And I went through life with the thought of it's convenient. McDonald's is convenient, Arby's is convenient, Taco Bell is convenient, this is what all the kids want, so while I'm here I might as well get something to eat. Um, now in, 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 in life in general, uh, 
uh, I see those as treats for our kids. Um, so when it comes to counting macros, I don't count macros. Um, I let my coach do that. Um, so, uh, but I, I do know what my macros are. So I know how much protein I need to take in. I know how many carbohydrates I'm allowed. And I know um, uh, what my calorie uh, intake is. And that's kind of what, um, what makes this this work is the caloric deficit as and uh, instead of having to do car cardio so if I was taking in and I've seen coaches give um, if competitors my size like 2,900 calories in a day there's no I mean well there are ways for me to eat 2,900 calories I'm telling you those snicker bars are great <laughs> but um, it's not lean, lean food. You have to think about how lean you want to be on stage. You know, it's not. Uh, you know, people ask me all the time, "What's your, what is, you know, what's your body fat right now?" I typically hold about 19% when I'm off prep. When I'm on prep, I usually push down to about 10. Stage show day stage is about 10 to 12%. Anybody who's below 14. A woman, in general, should be at, as an athlete, should be like at 14% body fat, as an athlete. And those are people who like run and do stuff like that. Um, if you watch what you eat, you watch your fats, you watch your, um, that type of, type of deal, you won't, you'll still get the protein that you have, that you need in order to build those muscles, um, but you won't have the fat content behind it. Now, there are good fats. People ask all the time, well, what about avocado? Oh, it's great. That's awesome. Um, but it's also still a fat. So if you're going to do avocado in your life, if you're going to do those types of fats, keto. People ask me about keto all the time. What do you think about keto? I think it's Atkins reinvented. That's what I think about keto. Um, so uh, if, if you know, uh, typically the rule is for um, somebody who is wanting to lose the weight, wanting to lose the fat, you take your weight for protein. So you take your current body weight and you add 80 grams to it. This is for a typical person. You know, anybody who's building for a show, you know that your your macros are going to be a little higher for that. Um, but for for anybody who just wants to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, um, take your body weight and add 80 grams of protein to it. 80 grams above your body weight. So now, typically, I weigh 100 and 125 pounds right now. So at 125, if I were just to want to lose weight, not to add muscle, um, I would um, do 205 grams of protein a day. As a gastric bypass patient, people tell me, how do you do that? That is impossible. It is not impossible. Nothing is impossible. I am a pure believer that nothing is impossible. If I am a gastric bypass patient with a stomach that is literally this big, I can do it. Anybody who has a stomach this big can do it. You have to, it, it, it's a want. You have to have the desire. You have to want to do it. You don't, you know, nothing comes easy, nothing comes free. Um, you, if you want it, you need to put in the work. Dieting is work. Lifting is work. When you were heavy, what was your light bulb moment that said, I'm done doing this, now's the time? Like, there had to have been that one spot that was just like, fuck it. So, the... At, the, at that point, at 225, I was in. Uh, I was on three different types of uh, uh, glucose control pills. So I was on uh, glucose and uh, diabetes pills. God, I forgot even what they were called. So I was on two, uh, three different types, and then I was on two different high blood pressure meds that were kicking my butt, and I had no energy and literally nothing. The light bulb moment was when that doctor sat me down and said, Ange, you're one step away from insulin dependency. You go to insulin dependency, you're never going to be off insulin. Ever. And if you do that, I guarantee you're probably going to be dead in two years. You continue on this track, you're going to die in two years. That's the light bulb moment when I knew that I didn't want to leave my kids without a mom. Now they just have a strong mom. That's all. They love me. They think I'm crazy. You're fun. <laughs> you know, it's funny because my girls constantly, they obviously, when I first lost all the way, I lost 110 pounds. My little one, I think she was, yeah, she was about five or six at the time. She came up to me for the first time and she hugged me. And she goes, Mom, look, I can put my arms all the way around your waist. And I, that was 
like the defining moment. Like, okay, my daughter who is five years old has like arms that are this big, like a T-Rex, can put her arms all the way around me. And she was completely happy about doing so. And granted, she loved me when I was fluffy too, but... Uh, from I, the mouths of babies, you don't Yeah, I know, from the mouths of babies who have no filters whatsoever. <laughs> they, they, they bring you back to reality. So, I did it for a good reason. I did it for my children. I did it for my granddaughter. I have a grandbaby, you know. Uh, I get to see her grow up. Um, and that's kind of typically what the goal is, is to watch my babies have babies. Okay, so, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Works in my blood and I'm killed cause I'm hungry <laughs>